What's up, y'all? It's Ty. In this video today, we're going to be specific specifically talking about game modes in NBA 2K25, my team, in a month after the game has came out. With all of the updates that we have seen, where is the game at? Is it rewarding? What is worth playing? What is not worth playing? All of those things. Now, as we do dive into those things, if you are new to the channel, man, please smash that subscribe button. We are on the road towards 130,000 subscribers, and I really do appreciate the support. So here's the situation. I have legitimately played so far every single mode but Salary Cap. But the reason I'm doing this video is because Salary Cap just got a big time update with the 90 plus overall gems of the game player at 2,500 wins. And so as I'm going through this, as I'm looking at it, I'm like, hmm, maybe salary cap has really jumped up over some of these other uh, things because of this uh, 90 plus card. Because on the road, you get some MT, you get some cards to add to your collection. Meanwhile, showdown. I play 20 games every weekend or every week for some mediocre rewards. To be honest, guys, I'm at tier one. I'm at the highest level you can be in showdown. And realistically, I've got to win 20 win, uh, win twenty games every week for mediocre rewards. Now, yes, it will be nice this week when I do get those last 15 wins and I get that, you know, 40 total packs to open up. But realize all of those packs are unsellable. And out of that full throttle pack, uh, you're probably not going to pull anything crazy. It's not a full throttle deluxe pack. So you're probably not going to have too much success out of that. As far as domination, guys. I will hold true to saying I still do believe Domination is the most rewarding mode. Whether it's getting badges, whether it is getting that 10,000 MT, whether it is getting Tim Duncan or Jalen Brunson, guys. I think Domination is the best way still to this day after you would complete challenges to grind the game. But as I have played the game, I, I, I really do believe like, yes, the game is not super rewarding to play. And with that being said, I feel like from 2K's perspective is why? Like, what is the purpose of me playing 20 showdown games at tier one, winning 20 showdown games at tier one to get mediocre rewards? What is the point of me winning or finishing in the top 1% four hour grind in King of the Court for a 92 plus rated card? That's it. Like there has to be more to this game mode. And the reason I say that is, look at the prices of these cards. It is not affordable right now to play this game. Now, on the counter argument is, if the game modes are more rewarding, cards will be more expensive. Well, I kind of used to believe that, but at this stage, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I am so sick and tired of paying ridiculous prices for cards. I'm so sick and tired of, you know, playing the game to really not have any success. Heck, breakout is fine, but the problem is I... And, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk a little bit because I'm upset right now. If you can't tell, I'm upset. I in breakout play what 26 games to get to the next board. And then I have to play around the board to get 10,000 MT. I'm probably playing 30 or 40 games for 10,000 MT because you got to complete all the boards and then you are all these games. Then you got to go to the middle portal. I get I guess per game you're gonna get 300 MT, whatever. Like you're gonna make some decent MT from breakout. But the only thing that is saving Breakout is the Dunktober event. If it wasn't for this Dunktober event, it would not be anything special in Breakout whatsoever. Like, again, you get a Dunktober award after every win. Again, you can get arenas. You can get other things that you could possibly sell, Whether it, if it's not now, down the road. And so those are the only things right now that I'm like, yeah, that has a chance to uh, you know be worth playing. Breakout right now does... Just for the sole fact of after every single win, you're getting a, uh, a you know a, a dunk toe pack. Otherwise, breakout's not worth it either. Because guess what? You get an unsellable card, or you, you get a pack. You get a deluxe pack. It's an unsellable card. So it was cool. Yes, it was awesome that I pulled Shangun the other day. But at this point, Shangun doesn't even play for me because why? I would have to spend how much to badge the card up? Fifty thousand coins. I'm not willing to do that for an unsellable card. The same thing with Seekly. It was cool that we got Seekly, but I don't want to have to sit here and spend 50,000 coins badging this card up. And so that's kind of the, 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 the issue with the game right now and where it's at. Yes, I've got some really good talent, but even with Tobias Harris in the challenges, I would always, 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 for you guys right now, if you are wondering what to grind, 
always grind these 92 plus hidden gems like the derrick rose one as well as the uh dunktober my team these are probably your most worth it to grind but like even with tobias harris the card is good but i'm gonna have to badge him up and if you've missed out guys badges are incredibly expensive right now in my team they're not cheap they might be cheaper today just for the sole fact that like the dunktober event is going on badges should be coming out of those uh packs at a pretty decent rate but yeah these packs or these badges are going to be really expensive as well and so that's the tough part it's like even if you do get a good card you feel like you've got to badge the card up and then it just makes things uh somewhat difficult i guess i'll buy some of these badges to add to my collection because i mean again it, it is just so hard uh to get any of these badges so i guess that's kind of my uh position on things right now i do love what they did with this dunktober event we need more things like this guys this isn't necessarily a game breaking event but it is an event that after every win you're gonna average maybe a hundred or probably a couple hundred extra mt after every win and breakout so now within an hour of breakout let or let's say if you play breakout for let's say three hours now instead of making i don't know twenty thousand mt you can now make forty thousand mt fear 30 40 000 mt which does make a pretty big difference so that's just the types of things that i want to see more of right now if i'm you guys and i do want to play online i'd play salary cap you don't have to be good to play salary cap honestly i don't even think you have to win games to get points if it works like it did in the past and there are some good rewards like 10,000 MT it should not be taken with a grain of salt like you're gonna get 15,000 MT as well as a 90 plus overall gems of the game player and again that could be a really solid card to hopefully help your squad out on one end of this uh, 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 or one side of things it is it is really 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 easy to kind of be no money spent in this game because of all the free cards that they've given now even if you play uh, King of the Court every weekend and you just finish in the top 50% and you get a Ruby card, more than likely those cards, can, some of them are going to be able to help you win games. You grind these two 92 plus challenges, you're going to be in a fine position. Grind a little breakout. You're going to be able to afford cards like Austin Rivers, cards like Purvis Ellison, cards like Harrison Barnes, cards that are really solid. So that's on one side of it. It is easy to be no money spent on this game right now. That's that's the one side. Now, on the flip side, on the other side, is it? Is it easy to be no money spent when it is so hard right now to get a solid MT count? So that's kind of the, the, the you gotta you gotta give and you gotta take, but that's where I'm at with the game. It just seems like on one side it is easy to get a uh to, to, to get a good no money spent team. I really do believe it, it's somewhat easy. Again, on the other side, it's like yeah, but let's say to get LeBron James, you're looking at over a million coins. To get Wilt Chamberlain, you're getting you're looking at let's say five hundred thousand coins. So if you are you know wanting to upgrade your team, it's just so inaccessible right now. And and when it comes down to game modes, guys, if you want to play offline, I would play domination. I think that's your most worth it. Now during this Dunktober event, I think Breakout's probably the most worth it, and then Dunkto or and then domination when it's non-event uh, oriented, uh, or, yeah, orientated. After that, online is salary cap. Whatever you do, Triple Threat Park's got to be the worst event to grind unless there's like an event going on, unless they're giving out like a diamond um, for a specific day, stuff like that. Still to this day, the most success that I've had is working the auction house. Buying cards for lower, selling them for high. It's really the most success that I've had on this game. And it's crazy that it has to be this, but it's where we're at right now in this game. And, uh, and am I suggesting that you guys work the auction house? I don't necessarily know. I don't think it's the easiest thing to necessarily do. But when it comes down to where we're at as far as a game right now, I think it's maybe the only thing to do on this game right now is work the auction house. Because the rest of this game mode, to me, doesn't feel accessible whatsoever. I'm eager to hear your guys' thoughts on this down below in the comments. Just because, again, I just feel like the game right now... I don't even want to say it's in like a super bad place because they have been giving out some solid free cards. They've been doing some things okay. But I just feel like it is so hard to get over that hump to not only have a decent team, but to make a really good team. Like, but I would say my team is really good. It's not great. But it's hard to get to this point. And, and I feel like once you get to this point, you can upgrade one position at a time like I slowly am doing and really make your squad next level good. But trust me, I tell you, it is not easy to get to this stage. That's where I'm at with my squad. I want to know your guys' thoughts. What is worth grinding? What is not worth it for you this week? Focus on salary cap. 
Um, while the uh, Dunktober event's going on, grind bear, breakout, play all game modes on rookie, complete the gore board, uh, take the middle portal, then figure out what you want on the outside um, and, and go from there. I, I don't hate the game mode, but I feel like, especially in breakout, they've got to do something a little bit more. Maybe it's, I don't know, it's something after every game like they're doing now, like the Dunktober event right now. I like it. You're getting something after every game. And I think that's what people ultimately like. Let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comments, guys. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.